Hello everybody, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville, and for the first time in three games, we're all happy! Yeah, for the most part. No, we're not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a mixed bag. Alright, so uh, this show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can give them a call at 414-800-7585. You can get all the nice Predators gear like this one in the Milwaukee area, or this. Or you can get uh, Minnesota Wild jerseys. You can get Admirals jerseys. You can get old Blackhawks Red Wings. You can get skates. You can get I referee like jerseys. I collection of vintage hockey jerseys. You can get ca old Capitals jerseys. You can get um, uh, uh, retro Admirals jerseys. I believe the only size they have left is a medium and a small, but don't quote me on that. How far retro? Uh, the black ones with the skull. Oh, the one I don't like. Gotcha. Yes. Um, and then you also have... You could get your referee gear. You could get uh, skate sharpened. You can get basically all your hockey gear. You could also get roller hockey skates. You could get so that's something mean. You could get during the yeah. summer and start playing in the street for what we we'll play out there in 27th and dodge car. It would be like car, car, car. It would never get any game on. <laughs> It'll be just like in Wayne's World, except for way more cars. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah, you can visit hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, there's a lot to look forward to with uh, Hockey Locker. They have everything you'll ever need hockey wise. Yep, yep. Oh, by the way, buy CCM gear, uh, spend $100, and you get two free Admiral tickets. Get, spend $200, get four free Admiral tickets. Spend $300, and get eight free Admiral tickets. If you spend $300, they'll love you long term. And if you spend $300, tell them we sent you. Yeah, yeah well, we could get some credit for that. So. Oh, yeah. So today is actually a, well. Well, this game was actually fairly decent. Yes. The Admirals, as we put in our previous video, uh, lost to the uh, Cleveland Lumberjacks. I mean, Monsters. They wore their Lumberjacks jerseys again. Um, they played fire wagon hockey and got burned. They lost 5-4. to four. And the Predators, well, they win 4-1. to one. So go get your Frosty and a free cup of coffee. Oh, yeah, that's right. They do do that Frosty promotion down there in Smash Village. Yeah. So hopefully they can get four while we're down there and we can enjoy that. As long as we try to hit up the Johnny Cash Museum, I'll be cool. Or the uh, whatever. I think that's just the Johnny Cash Museum. Yep, well, I'm on the I don't, I don't really care about the Country Music Hall of Fame. Even but though that would, would be cool. If, I, if we could take a tour of the uh, original Grand Ole Opry, that would be pretty cool. Yep. But other than that, I just want to go down there to hang out in uh, Tennessee. I want to go to... It's, it's been like, what, two years since I went down there last? Yeah, I want to go to, what is that, Tootsie's? That yeah, bar? but we got, the, we got your kids, so we want to be able to enjoy any of the uh, cool things. Well, we would be able to go in there... It's just we'd have to rotate. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, with the kid, he's going to really limit all the cool stuff we could do. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of kid-friendly stuff to do down so in Nashville. Nashville. So, Nashville fans, um, we will be there in March 2nd, on March 2nd. Uh, probably there the day before and a little bit the day after. So, if you have any recommendations of uh, kid-friendly activities we could do, because unfortunately we're going to have a rug rat with us, so drop us a line. Yep. I already know the adult stuff I want to do. <laughs> yep. Also, can you send us the address of as many Waffle Houses that you know of? Because I hear Waffle House has good food, and I've never tried it before because we don't got Waffle House here in Wisconsin. I don't want to eat at Waffle House. Waffle. I do. I want to try out. Oh, also uh, Jack in the Box. I don't Addresses eat it. for Jack in the Box. The last time I ate Jack in the Box, I was in Vegas. Delicious food. I want Jack in the Box again. Um, actually, I won't. I don't want uh, Waffle House. Just based off of what Upchurch said about the Waffle Houses in Nashville. Well, if you base everything off of what everybody else tells you, you might as well never leave your house because <laughs> people tell you bad things about everything. Anyway. On to the stats. <laughs> yeah, but I'm serious. Please drop us addresses for Waffle Houses and Jack in the Boxes in the Nashville area. All right, anyways, uh, stats for the game. Damn it, I'm hungry. All right, it was uh, 38 shots on goal for the Predators, uh, 24 for the Kings. 
uh, 54% uh, face-off percentage for the Predators, 47% for the uh, Kings. Nashville 0 for 5 on the power play, LA 1 for 4. LA uh, had 15 penalty minutes, Nashville had 13. Uh, LA out hit the Predators 20 to 17. Uh, LA had 14 blocks and the Predators had 10. And then the Predators had uh, four giveaways and LA had eight. So the Preds played a lot better of a cleaner and more defensive game, and that made me very happy. Yeah, they played way better than they did on uh, the Winter Classic. The Winter Classic, that was garbage, in my opinion. I think it might be just that Fa Fabro may not be ready for the NHL yet. How much time has he spent in Milwaukee, if any? So, yeah, maybe he should come here and uh, give us some entertaining hockey watch. Hey, the more entertaining hockey I get to watch in person, the better. So, we'll see. Anyway, so getting into the scoring. Scoring first is the Italian Grim Reaper, as I call him. Rocco, Rocco Grimaldi, Grimaldi, my buddy. Rocco Grimaldi with his seventh goal, which would mark his best. Last year he had six, um, which was his best pro career season. This year... Halfway through it almost, they, he's already uh, hit that yeah. and passed it. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad Grimaldi's actually doing good in Nashville because I was sad to see him go, and now it's like I want him to come back to Milwaukee, but nope, not happening. So Grimaldi got his seventh with an assist from Craig Smith, who's been red hot lately, um, and Roman Yossi, who has been red hot lately. Roman Yossi on this play in particular tied a franchise record with Shea Weber for points uh, in consecutive games by a defenseman. Then Ryan Johansson scored his ninth with an assist from Roman Yossi and Matthias Ekholm. Yossi's 29th, Ekholm's 17th. Then, ex then on the power play, Alex Iafalo scored his eighth. Iafalo. Iafalo. What? Uh, and with an assist from Tyler Toffoli, his 13th, and that was on the power play. Then, That's a hell of a combo. I have follow to Toffoli. To <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, then in the third period, Yakov Trenin got his second pro goal. Wow, they season, actually gave it to him. Cool. With an assist from Matt Irwin, his second. Irwin did something. Besides get a healthy scratch? Yes. Wow. And uh, Austin Watson. Austin Watson with his seventh. Then Craig Smith scored his eighth with an assist from the Italian Grim Reaper, Rocco Grimaldi, with his 13th. He has 20 points on the season. Now, what are those stats that you were going to throw out there, or are you going to wait until we're done with these games? I'm going to wait until we're done, right okay. before we do the preview. Um, okay. Also, uh, Pecorine was in net for the Predators. He stopped 23-24 with a .9... Five eight save percentage that will really help him going forward. I hope, uh, at least confidence wise. On the other hand, Jake Campbell had thirty four saves on thirty eight shots with a point eight nine five save percentage. Uh, from the beginning of the game, it just looked like he was off. I don't know what it was, but I've seen him play. It looked like he was off. That did not look like the Jake Campbell I've seen before. Um, so referees were Kyle Rahman and Trevor Hansen. Um, linesmen were Shandor Alfonso and Julian Fourier. Head coach of the Kings is Todd McCallum. Head coach in Nashville is Peter Laviolette. Scratches for Nashville were Alexander Carrier, Dante Fabro, and Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne's out with an illness. Dante Fabro with an upper body. Um, scratches for Los Angeles is the longtime L.A. King, Dustin Brown. Um, and yeah, Dustin Brown. Uh, didn't he win the Con Smythe the last time the Kings won? The uh, Cup? Yeah. Uh, Derek Forbot and Curtis McDermott. Um, so, stat I was going to throw out. I have to go get this. Alright, here we go. So, mo most points in Preds history through 40 games. Go. Roman Yossi now with 43. 
He broke Paul Correa's record set back in nine, uh, oops, 19, <laughs> 2006, 2007 season with 41. Uh, Phil Forsberg was right behind that with 38 points in the 2017-2018 season. But yeah, he set a record for 43 points uh, through the first 40 games. Up next, the Predators play the Anaheim Ducks. And go. <laughs> Gore. <laughs> All right, yeah, the last time the Ducks played the Predators was on October 22nd. Uh, Nashville beat them 6-1. to one. <laughs> Backfired on you. I punched you instead. Just messing with you. Yeah, but I said Predators already won 6-1. This game is in Anaheim, which is why it's a late start. All right, their first line for the forwards. We got Adam Henrique, uh, 12 goals, 9 assists. We have Ryan Getzlaff, 10 goals, 15 assists. Uh, Sam Carrick, Carrick uh, 1 goal, 1 assist. I'm assuming he's recently been called up. Uh... Second forward line, you got uh, Max Jones, four goals, two assists. Uh, Sam Steele, three goals, ten assists. And then uh, Andre Kasi. O N D R E J. Kass. Case. Okay. Anyways, he had three goals, 11 assists. Uh, their defensive pairings. Holy crap, this is bad. <laughs> um. Hampus Lindholm, he has 16 assists, but only one goal. Uh, Josh Manson, he only has three assists. Uh, Cam Fowler has eight goals, 12 assists. And then Eric uh, Goodbranson? Goodbranson. Uh, three goals, three assists. Yeah, their defense, uh, um, they, they uh, facilitate the puck, which is... A good thing, but yeah, they have like a very little scoring power. All right, so they have one, two, three, four, five, six. Over the last five games, uh, there's really nobody that's on fire. I mean, just look at it. It's like one goal, one goal. Correction, uh, Jacob Silverberg, uh, two goals, one assist. He's currently on fire as far as the forwards go. Uh, on defense, yeah. Cam Fowler, that's it. One goal, one assist. And Eric uh, Goodbranson, he has a goal. But all right, so I, I'm actually gonna throw. Yeah, their defense is garbage. And if we don't beat them, hang on, we'll let me play into that because this is how garbage their defense is. Cam Fowler with a plus five. Eric Goodbranson with a plus three. Michael Delzato with a plus two. Ooh, or Michael Delzato with a plus three. Uh, Raquel Ricard with a plus two. Jacob Silverberg, zero. Adam Henrique, zero. David Shore, zero. Everybody else from that point on as a, plus, as a minus. Uh, your minus leader is Sam Steele with a minus 11. Hamfus Lindholm, minus 10. Uh, Jacob Larson, minus so 8. So how would you rate their defense? Crap. <laughs> no. I'm just so saying, I, I, I was just assessment. kind of just going with uh, uh, letting them know how much, how bad they really are. All right. Well, what's their uh, record in the last five? Because yeah, if if Nashville loses to the Ducks, hang your head in shame. I know. Right, so will. off top, I'm gonna just talk about the goalies a little bit. Uh, John Gibson, he has 31 games played, uh, 31 games started. He has uh, 12 wins, 16 losses, with a 2.92 goals against average and a .907. Save percentage. Their backup goalie is longtime Buffalo Sabre Ryan Miller. Um, he has 11 games played, 10 games started, four wins, four losses, and a, uh, two overtime losses, with a .901 save percentage and a 3.21 goals against average. Also, Gibson has one shutout and Miller has one assist. I hate you, Ted. <laughs> I'm having computer issues. Sorry, folks. Alright, so for the West, the Anaheim Ducks sit currently in last place. They are 3 6 and 1 in their last 10. 
okay, that would explain why their defense is garbage and why uh, offensively, Getzlaff and Henrik are... At home, best. they are 10, 7, and 3. Ooh. Yeah, what's the Predators' road record? The Predators on the road are... Nine, eight, and two. Eh, so this is going to be one of those uh, nail-biter type games. If I had to predict it, I'd say it's a nail-biter game. Well, with that win, the Predators pull one game closer to a wild-card spot, apparently. Yeah, but Silverberg, uh, Henry can get slap. I would recommend keeping an eye on because, man, this Silverberg... Sure, he's in their last line, but 15 goals and 13 assists this year. That's nothing to ignore. It's not. I dare you to ignore a guy with 15 and 13. <laughs> All right, so currently sitting in the wild card position. I'm just looking at it and letting people know how it sits. Yeah. All right, the Preds have a four games in hand against the top team, and we're five points back. So if we can pull... Eight points, and when we as we're catching up to say Edmonton, uh, um, as far as games played, we could actually slip into that spot. Well, uh, technically Edmonton and Winnipeg are the wild card. So if, even if we could catch with Winnipeg, eight points, would put the Predators at fifty-two, which would be tied with Dallas for third. But by that time, who knows what's going to be happening? Yeah, we still have a lot of hockey to go because tonight. But it is something. Game thirty nine, game forty. So we have forty two games to play. Yep. Oh, the season's legit, almost half over. Yeah, it's been flying by. It's been a what fun ride. I guess it's been fun because we're sitting here in Milwaukee watching and win not, after win, and, after and we're not at each other's throats as easily as we were last year. We're not rookies anymore. No. Nah. We're, we're just your regular, uh, we're your, uh, I don't know, veg I want to say veteran, because, yeah. We're not going through a sophomore slump yet. Don't knock it, or, uh, don't jinx it, I should say. Also, uh, congratulations to the Milwaukee Admirals for their 50th season. It's right over there. I forgot to put it up. Sorry, guys. Oh, um, oh I forgot to put that back up. Yeah, well, we're talking about Predators, so... Yeah. Um, also... But, yeah, I'm saying Predators, you need to beat Anaheim. There is no excuse for you guys here's, to lose to here's, here's my solution to the rest of the year. Try not to lose in regulation. I was just <laughs> about to say, you took the word right out of my mouth. Do you, how you make the playoffs is not losing in regulation. The Admirals have six losses but in, in regulation, but, like, nine in... Overtime. Or a shootout, yeah. So, like, nine in overtime or a shootout. So, like, that's nine points on top of all the They're wins. 24 victories? Yeah. Which, could you please send us Carrier back if you're just not going to play him? Oh, uh, yeah, it would be great to have Carrier back. Because him and Daniel Carr were uh, fun to watch together. But we'll see what happens in the next coming days. We'll see how uh, Ellis feels come Tuesday. Uh, we'll see how everything goes coming going forward. In Nashville, please treat Yakov Trenin well. He's yeah. a very good player. Yeah, obviously. He's played in like four games and has two goals and an assist. Yeah, so he's a good player. I treat him well. In Grimaldi, you guys love him up there. Even though he's and not Blackwell lighting, as well. He's been even, though, well. even though Grimaldi's not lighting the world on fire, but he's still consistent with what he does. And Craig Smith has, from whatever reason, when I started saying, hey, as a Badger fan, I like guys like Craig Smith and Kyle Turks because they're former Badgers. And, you know, um, when it comes down to it, I'm a little harder on those guys because I expect more. Yeah. So, this has been From Walking to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. <laughs> 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We will see you guys. Go to HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. We will see you guys Monday morning. <laughs> yeah, technically, because tomorrow's a 9 o'clock Central Time start, people. It's so the game won't be over until around midnight and get the video uploaded. Probably Sorry, be kids, you probably won't be able to watch the game tomorrow because you got school Monday. 
Oh, yes. Have your parents tell you about it when you wake up. All right, so see you guys. Peace. And parents, enjoy your now vacation.